Good afternoon and welcome to a session on MMM, redefining marketing performance tracking in a privacy-centric era. Um, just to quickly introduce ourselves, I'm Una, a product manager, and this is Dong Chang, a data scientist from Airbridge. So you've probably heard about the growing importance of MMM and its potential to tackle privacy challenges. In this session, we will go over some of the key questions together to see how MMM can truly empower marketers to succeed in a privacy-centric era. Okay, so let's start with, us, with our session with a topic that probably everyone in this room can easily relate to. Measuring ad performance has become increasingly challenging. I think there are two aspects to consider. The first is the limitations of the last touch attribution, and the second, growing constraints imposed by privacy regulations. First, the last touch attribution itself is far from perfect. Probably, as all you know, it's a rule-based method leading to oversimplification by only crediting the very last touch point. As a result, the contribution of earlier ads in the user journey can be easily neglected. Moreover, with the strengthening privacy regulations, even using last touch attribution has become an uphill battle. For instance, Apple's ATT policy has made it impossible to track ad exposures for iOS users. Uh, from our statistics, a staggering 75% of iOS users have opted out for tracking, so resulting in a significant increase in an unattributed convergence. And these challenges underscore the importance of exploring an alternative measurement method. In this respect, um, MMM, marketing mix modeling, is often mentioned as a potential solution. However, it is essential to acknowledge that MMM is not a one-size-fits-all fix, so we need to figure out an answer to some of the key questions first. First, um, we need to start with the fundamental questions of what is MMM. While MMM has been a buzzword recently, many are still uncertain about its true nature, so we need to grasp the fundamentals first. Next, we'll explore the dis distinctions between MMM and last touch attribution, addressing how MMM can actually overcome the limitations of last touch attribution that originally faced. Third, despite its potential benefits, it is true that MMM has not been universally embraced yet. We have to examine the limitations or any restriction factors that have hindered its wider adoption. Lastly, we'll explore how we can make MMM an everyday solution that marketers can easily use for their day-to-day decision-making process. With us answering these questions, we hope you uh, gain a deeper understanding of MMM today. And let's begin our session discussing the first question, what is MMM? I'll hand over to Zongchang from here. Thank you. Okay, so, hi. So, as Un has introduced, MMM, or Marketing Mixed Modeling, is a statistical approach originating in the 1950s that is used in marketing to estimate the impact of various marketing drivers on performance metrics such as sales or installs without the need uh, for user-level granular data. Uh, it takes into account your historical marketing activity, uh, any contextual or external drivers, as well as logistical factors in how we consume ads, like the principle of diminishing returns or ad stock when measuring performance. Uh, so to put it in more visual terms, uh, MMM uses your time series marketing data, like ad spend, for example, uh, as well as any pertinent contextual data and fits it to a regression model to infer causal relations between marketing ac activities and sales outcomes. This can be interpreted as a breakdown of your marketing efforts into a time series attribution analysis. And unlike conventional rule-based attribution models, MMM recognizes a real life, uh, recognizes real life media behavior like carryover and satur saturation effects like I've mentioned, as well as inherent seasonalities, trends, and time-varying uh, baseline patterns that can be modeled in a regression, uh, regression model. So now that we have established uh, the core theory behind MMM, uh, what's significant about MMM is that it can assess correlations between input and output and establish causal relations. Uh, this capability alone offers a considerable improvement over last touch attribution. Uh, 
and since rule-based models can be misleading due to spurious interactions in the uh, marketing funnel or even forego incremental effects altogether. Uh, in contrast to last touch attribution, where touch point order plays a pivotal role, uh, attribution results in MMM are not influenced by the sequence of touch points, uh, focusing solely on the strength of correlation. So I mentioned briefly that MMM has been around since the 1950s. And you might be wondering, well, why hasn't it been adopted in the digital marketing sphere now? Well, despite its potential, traditional MMM practices have three key limitations that have hindered its wide adoption in the uh, fast-paced digital marketing landscape. Uh, first, these models were traditionally developed and executed by third-party consulting firms. And the process tended to be lengthy and often required a couple of years worth of weekly or monthly data, resulting in long analysis delivery cadence. Second, the high cost and resource requirements of legacy MMM uh, have made it primarily accessible to large enterprises, thereby limiting its benefits to other segments within the market. And last, uh, this traditional MMM approach also relied on manual analysis by data scientists rather than the marketers who were doing the decision making. Uh, which compounded the time-consuming and middleman aspect of the entire process. Now, clearly there's been considerable renewed interest in MMM lately, and there's also been a lot of talk about open source solutions for MMM. Uh, these solutions were created to provide marketers with readily available tools that overcome the limitations of legacy MMM, uh, as mentioned before, and many players in the digital marketing industry have made some progress in adopting MMM into the current landscape, leveraging these solutions. However, while open source MMM solutions may seem appealing due to their accessibility and cost effectiveness, they too present several challenges that marketers need to consider. Um, first, these solutions are hard coded, meaning that their model implementation and structure is relatively inflexible. Uh, since they were designed to be a foundational solution, uh, they can lack some of the domain specificity uh, needed to measure performance at a detailed level. So, how do we adjust the code? Well, as powerful as they are, open source solutions demand a high level of expertise and knowledge in data science and programming languages, hence the need for in-house data scientists. Uh, without such resources, companies may struggle to leverage these tools effectively. Now, from the end user's perspective, it's also important, it's also important to note that these solutions can be time consuming and complex to implement into a real life marketer's workflow. They often take substantial time and effort which means money, to set up, configure, and execute, not to mention gathering and preparing the relevant data. And last, but certainly not the least, these open source libraries typically lack a dedicated customer support system, which means users are often left to their own devices when issues or uncertainties arise. Um, this can lead to delays and inefficiencies in deploying the model and interpreting the results. Now, by observing both the progress made so, far, made so far, as well as the limitations of open source solutions, we at Airbridge realized that in order to fully reintroduce MMM into the digital era, we must develop an easily configurable platform that does not compromise on its compl uh, complexity and function. So with that in mind, one of the primary goals uh, when developing the Airbridge MMM solution was to strike a healthy balance between domain specificity and user transparency. Uh, we tackled this challenge from two perspectives. Uh, on the engineering side, with the MMM engine, uh, the aim was to build a system that allows for model customization without the need for extensive in-house DS resources. The key question here is, how do we build upon the progress made on MMM so far and offer an option that marries domain customization with a streamlined data to model process? Now, from the product perspective with the MMM Studio, the key question we want to answer is, how can we deliver this powerful MMM engine directly to the hands of the marketers so that they can immediately and readily use these tools to its full capability? That meant tackling the inherent low user autonomy of the previous generation's MMM so that marketers' uh, focus can remain on interpreting the takeaways rather than being overwhelmed by the intricacies of modeling uh, while still retaining control over key aspects of the overall process. By addressing these two key questions, we hope to be able to play a significant role in fast-tracking MMM into the ad tech scene, and hopefully into the hands of mar digital marketers in the face of the privacy-centric privacy era. 
So in this next session, we'll take a deeper dive into the MMM engine, which drives the core of our MMM Studio product. <clears throat> so before we look to the product side, let's key in on some of the major developments we have made so far in our in-house MMM engine. Uh, from the onset, Airbridge, Airbridge's MMM engine is designed to meticulously handle diverse layers of, uh, of the marketing ecosystem with features like a fully automated digital, uh, data ingestion process and a statistical approach to data validation. Our goal here is to ensure that our model is built on customized understanding of your, of your business. Uh, when it comes to the modeling process, uh, we leverage regularization techniques such as Ridge and Lasso, uh, as well as our own multi-objective variants that take into account uh, business constraints like CPI and ROAS. Uh, we're super proud of this development as it, as it has helped guard against uh, overfitting while preserving prior knowledge, ensuring our model is robust and versatile. To validate and adjust the model, we offer calibration features that can leverage both external lift studies uh, as well as uh, incrementality data to fine tune model performance. Uh, in fact, you might have heard about our MMM calibration project with Ably uh, in another session uh, held earlier today. Uh, in which we executed a calibration case study for the fashion platform client with the support from our partners at Meta. Uh, finally, our MMM analysis isn't just a broad aggregated overview. We provide insights at a granular level, extending to campaign, platform, and even funnel placement level detail, which empowers marketers with directly actionable insights, such as with our budget optimizer report. So, with all that, with all that said and done, you may now be wondering, well, how does Airbridge MMM's model fare against the open source tools available? That's a totally natural and valid question. And we are happy to share some key results of the benchmark studies on our in-house model uh, to two open source alternatives that we have collected in the process of our model development. So from a representative sample of 40 of Airbridge's MMP clients, we measured Airbridge MMM against two open source alternatives on data sets with various analysis targets platform filters for a total of 240 model cases, spanning a wide portfolio of client domains, channel mix, as well as use cases. Uh, we do want to stress here that uh, our data set for this study, while diverse and robust, is relatively straightforward in terms of feature selection. Uh, we chose to exclude external factors that can vary do from domain to domain, and these exclusions were necessary to maintain parity between these various solutions. Uh, this means that each solution was assessed based on its fundament fundamental capabilities in order to provide a clear apples-to-apples -apples comparison. Uh, as for benchmark metrics, we chose to keep it simple and measure computational cost, which basically means how long each model uh, took to fit to the, fit to the data, uh, in order to gauge model agility and reliability, uh, as well as model training fit metrics like R-squared and uh, percentage error to gauge model performance and stability. Uh, so in terms of computation time, which can be a significant factor in the usability of MMM solution, uh, Airbridge MMM was able to process our comprehensive benchmark data set uh, at an average of 11 seconds per model, in contrast to the 54 seconds and over 10 minutes uh, it took on average for alternatives A and B. Uh, the benefit of this expedited computation is twofold. Not only does it allow businesses to derive actionable insights faster, but it also boosts the productivity of marketers who no longer need to wait extended periods for model results uh, uh, using different data and model configurations. Now, this result underscores the practicality uh, of Airbridge's MMM solution uh, in the rapidly evolving business landscape, where agility and quick decision making uh, can be pivotal. What's also important to note here is that this difference in computation capability becomes more even more apparent when dealing with larger di dimension data sets. We found that when we increased the input count to above 20 to 30, as in, the, uh, as in a case study we did with a client with a more varied marketing mix, uh, we found that open source solutions struggle significantly and sometimes fail to complete analyses even after three to four hours. In contrast, uh, Airbridge's MMM engine can handle these larger data sets efficiently, uh, completely, uh, completing model training typically within two to three minutes. Uh, as for training fit, uh, training fit metrics, um, Airbridge MMM resulted in favorable performance against the open source alternatives all around. Uh, 
uh, with roughly three to four percent, percent point improvements in both R squared and percent error on average across all platforms and analysis targets in the benchmark. This illustrates that even when stripped to its baseline Im implementation, Arabic MMM demonstrates competitiveness and viability as a potential MMM uh, solution among the handful available today. While these numbers shed light on how the, en uh, how the engine measures up to freely available solutions, its true value lies in its ability to balance accuracy with usability. Uh, so in the next section, I'd like to quickly share some key insights and takeaways made in MMM, uh, made in MMM use cases that highlights AirBridge MMM's strength as a privacy resilient measurement tool. So, so in this first case study, uh, we have a hyper casual gaming client who, through an analysis on their products apps and st app installs using AirBridge's MMM uh, solution, was able to recapture 18% of conversions that previously went unattributed in last touch attribution. Uh, this reduction in unattributed or organic conversions better aligned to the client's intuitions as their product was a newly released mobile game with a hyper casual gaming target audience. So their marketing uh, heavily relied on paid media. Uh, in short, MMM was able to alleviate the shortcomings of signal loss in the gaming domain and provide a better understanding of how responsive their paid media is to the user acquisition of their target consumer in, pre in preparation for their next release. Uh, in the second case study, we have a mobile commerce platform client whose iOS tracking went uh, almost completely unattributed in LTA uh, due to ATT issues. The attribution results in AirBridge MMM proposed a 79% 79 dec 79 decrease uh, in unattributed iOS order completes, meaning that 79% was real allocated back to the iOS marketing mix. Now, when we compare the results of LTA and MMM for Android order complete uh, independently, we can see that in situations where the market funnel is uh, straightforward and signal loss is minimal, MMM results uh, mirrored a response that was consistent with the client's LTA results. Now, while last touch is not always the answer, uh, this parallel lends some credibility to, uh, to the MMM's iOS attribution reallocations uh, under the assumption that consumers across platforms uh, exhibit similar responsiveness. Now, this showcases the ad adaptability of our AirBridge MMM engine, which has the capacity to not only track attribution in a changing digital landscape, but also reflect actual domain interactions and behavior. In this way, the AirBridge MMM engine lays a strong foundation for the application of these analytics in a real-world setting for real-world real -world marketers. Uh, and that's where our next point of discussion comes into play, the MMM Studio. Uh, the MMM Studio is the product embodiment of the MMM engine, uh, designed to bring these powerful marketing mix modeling capabilities directly into the hands of marketers and, and, and the decision makers. Uh, with our high-performing MMM engine encapsulated in the MMM Studio, we've ensured these insights are readily accessible. Uh, re readily accessible, sorry. Now I'll hand over the stage back to RPM Unha, who will share how you can directly leverage the MMM Studio product. All right, um, so it's time to transfer these amazing capabilities of AirBridge MMM engine that Tongchang just explains to the hands of marketers by offering it as a service, making it accessible for everyone. So in this section, we will explore some key features of AirBridge MMM Studio, an interactive dashboard for marketers, and how they can actually revolutionize their marketing performance tracking process. So as you can see on the slide, various features are ready to help marketers. At the core of MMM Studio lies a simple model creation enriched with context variables catering to your unique business needs through model configuration. Then stay on top of your marketing game with Performance Tracker. Daily reviews of your past perform marketing performance offer up-to-date insights to ensure agile and data-driven strategies. Finally, unlock the potential of your marketing budget with Budget Optimizer. This innovative tool will deliver new budget proposals that enhance cost efficiency, enabling wise resource allocation for optimal results. Let's explore each feature closely and uncover how MMM Studio can help you. OK. 
Okay, let's begin with model configuration where complexity meets simplicity. This feature allows any marketers to easily create its um, sophisticated MMM models without the need for any coding knowledge. Open source projects are great, they have amazing features, but they often require the marketers to run a code to train the MMM model, which means that they need to rely on collaboration with data scientists or need coding expertise. Yet, model configuration doesn't require any of these efforts. So what you need to do is just upload the data and identify the target and marketing variables, and that's it. With just a few clicks, model configuration handles all the complexity behind the scene and granting marketers access to powerful insights. Also, beyond its simplicity in model creation, model configuration empowers marketers to test various marketing hypotheses. So as marketers, you probably have one or two hypotheses on how external variables like weather, competitors' performance, or even your own app's update affect your business performance. With model configuration, marketers just need to identify these external factors as context variables. This will allow the MMM model to measure their impacts alongside with various marketing activities as you wish. Furthermore, um, we understand that your everyday life as a marketer is super busy and you need to make decisions fast. So on MMM Studio, once marketers set up the model for training, it takes no longer than five minutes to deliver the results, and in most cases, it takes less than a minute. We also provide some key metrics, such as R squared, which explains the explanatory power of the model to allow marketers to quickly check if the model has been trained with relevant variables. Also, we avoid black box modeling and prioritize full transparency with our clients. So on the model details page, marketers can always review all the key variables or any configurations that they have set up. We believe that all of these features of model configuration is helping marketers to easily access the power of Airbridge MMN engine. Okay, and moving on to our second feature called performance tracker. This is designed to provide a comprehensive overview of past performance. So this dashboard offers a stack trend chart and a table, providing a clear overview of how each variable contributed to your conversions. So with this, marketers can easily figure out the most impact var impactful variables driving their success and pinpoint those that need to be improved. To better understand how marketers can leverage these features, um, let's explore some of our use cases. Firstly, um, yeah. Firstly, um, performance tracker can help you gain better insights, especially for iOS conversions, where proper measurement has become challenging due to privacy measures. As we discussed earlier, MMM is more robust to privacy measures. To review the results specifically for iOS on the performance tracker, all you need to is just check the organic shares of iOS um, with the iOS platform filter. Then you will reveal the true organic contribution of your entire business performance. And here's another use case of performance tracker. Beyond just reviewing the performance results, it can also empower marketers to verify the performance from a cost perspective. So for instance, for an MMM model on the number of installs, we provide relevant cost metrics such as eCPI, effective cost per installs, to reveal its true cost effectiveness. With this, you can easily identify the cost efficient and inefficient variables for your business, including you optimize your marketing strategies for maximum cost effectiveness. And here comes our final feature, the budget optimizer. Okay, the budget optimizer automates the once manual task of budget allocation, making the process seamless and time saving. This report addresses one of the most critical questions for marketers, how to allocate the given amount of budget to reach the maximum number of targets. By simply inputting the budget amount on a dashboard, the MMM model automatically suggests the most efficient budget plan for you. And interestingly, the budget optimizer offers just more than an automated budget plan. It also calculates unexpected performance, making it an even more powerful tool for your decision making. 
So imagine presenting your manager with a new budget plan. He or she may ask, okay, so then what's the expected outcome from this new plan? And budget optimizer has you covered here. So you can get the potential outcomes like expected number of installs or revenue from a new budget plan on a dashboard. Um, in other words, with Budget Optimizer, there is no need to manually develop new budget plans every week or every month. You will receive automated budget results with expected outcomes, allowing you to focus on energy elsewhere, like on finding the most effective creatives. Okay, and this is the final section. So I just want to briefly um, introduce as our last point that we have some exciting plans to release more functionalities to help the marketers. Our upcoming data connector will automate data ingestion. Marketers will no longer need to manually upload data each time they need to train the model, which means that they can save their valuable time and effort. Next, the simulator will help you swiftly identify the minimum budget amount that is required to reach your target goals. And lastly, with Insight Plus, you will gain additional valuable insights such as marketing model, uh, marketing channels responsiveness, or even the carryover effect, providing a deeper understanding of your performance. Okay, so as we come to the end of our discussion um, on MMM, I just want to mention as a closing remarks that our product is not perfect at this moment, so we will continue our best to evolve our product to meet your needs, offering cutting edge solutions for tracking performance and making data decisions. Yeah, so to wrap up, we discussed an overview of how MMM has progressed in the digital market sphere and how Airbridge MMM has took strides to answer the key questions left in order to fill those missing pieces. Um, thank you for joining us, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you. <laughs>